Composing Gloves here, and today we are taking a look at the best oscilloscope plugins. And to show you that this is not your average oscilloscope plugin review video, I wanted to know out of paid free, what was the best? So on my website, I created a spreadsheet. I'm going to go to the desktop version for this, but there's a mobile page for this as well. Uh, but you can see here are all the properties of each plugin I could find. I tried to get my hands on all of them. Every single one that I could find is on here. You've got a little picture of it, all these things. And so I went through and looked for all of these things and, you know, noted it down. I'm like, does it do this? How does it do it? Does it do it quality? There are special notes at the end. If I ran into any special issues or notes on specific plugins, I did some CPU benchmarking with all of them, including 10 instances and 20 instances. And I explained the process of how I did that here. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, it's just for a little bit of insight. It's not meant to be like a super rigorous test. Um, and then you, you come across stuff that's really poorly optimized, like ocular scope obviously has some sort of an issue going on because it maxed out my CPU signal analyzer was the other big spike. And that's just because it's only 32 bit. And the guy who made this has updated all his plugins to like one package called tool chain, which is right above it, which performs much better and is available in 64 bit. And it's really the 32 bit that kills signal analyzer. I actually still really recommend it. It's great scope. And it looks better than tool chain and with the the two waves on tool chain for whatever reason one's like white or like dark gray and the other one's like gray ish it's really hard to see the stereo field thing where on signal analyzer it's you know i think it's like black and blue so it's way better anyways yeah we got some cpu benchmarks and then i just tested it i even went so far as starting to go into daw territory even considered physical options at the bottom. I do own a physical analog scope sitting right here next to me. I think it's definitely worth having and it made a level three on my judgment system. So there's some levels here on what I think, you know, should you download these? There's a lot here. The thing is that they're not all, you know, just because it didn't have, doesn't have a level doesn't mean it's bad. And this is specific to my system and my results and kind of what I'm looking for in a scope. I want something that looks dang cool. So there's some artistic scopes on here that are more about just, you know, looking really cool, like oscilloscope music kind of stuff. And then there's scopes on here that are significantly more technical. So uh, this is just this is just my judgment. Like if you're going to download a few, if you're going to have a few, uh, then I would get these. But there's a ton of them that are free. And some of these I only tried out demos because I was not going to go and buy every single dang scope. That'd just be way too much. And there's a few uh, interesting ones on here like free sort of that just means you have to subscribe to something to get it but you can get it for totally free uh, this one i believe you have to be part of a mailing list and this is also the one that was the cpu disaster and then there's a fake free fake free is free because it's they can say it's free because they're giving away the scope for free but in order to get the free scope you have to buy something else buy them so this isn't really free like it's free you know so it's a fake free so there's that. I, I could not benchmark this one uh, just because I don't own anything by Vengeance. Sorry, Vengeance. I just don't. And I and so, uh, yeah, if you if you want to hook me up with it, I'll benchmark it and put it up here and uh, fill in the gaps on things I wasn't sure about. Basically, I, I tried to watch videos, which there's there's like one or two videos about this out there and uh, their website. I was specifically interested also only in the scope of each of these plugins. A lot of them feature um, spectrograms and other things. We don't care about any of that jazz. I want an oscilloscope, man. I want a good scope. It's all I care about is a nice oscilloscope. Also, if I ran across any weird bugs, they're marked down here. Any any notes to be aware of. Because there was another one that gave me big FPS drops where my system became almost unusable. And uh, yeah. So th things to be wary of let's go ahead let's dive in so i don't want to go over like every little detail here this is on my website you don't need to be a member to get to this it's just in the articles oscilloscope comparison and just as a quick uh sort of note if you want the top to be visible all the time you might consider mobile view this just ensures that it fits on a mobile screen if i if i go all the way out it will it will clip and it's annoying so i made two pages because i wanted a desktop version too uh, but this, you notice the top stays where it is. It's a bit easier to do it. I could not figure out how to freeze the side thing. So the name would stay on there. But what I could do is make it so you could click on it. So it would stay. So this makes it easier to see the properties of each one. Just so, just a little bit of website stuff. 
So I real I this took me a really long time to make. I wanted to be really thorough and as detailed as possible. The information on here is as accurate as I know as I could get it. If I made a mistake on here anywhere, please let me know. Uh including typos, because I am prone to this. And not everything that I was using had like a spell checker. So there's that. All right, let's go over our first, our number one scope. The winner of the scope competition was Signalizer. And Signalizer, totally free. Kind of blew my mind. Again, we're only looking at the scopeness of it. So we're looking at the oscilloscope. Now, the vector scope, I did consider if it was made to do X, Y. If you could get it to do X, Y as well, then I counted it as part of the oscilloscope. But if it only had the 45s, I didn't count it because I was only measuring the 45s. So let's go over to the oscilloscope. This is the scope just by default. You know, that's a nice scope. But if and notice, we can go full screen. We can uh, we can also resize this freely, which is beautiful. And if we bring up our controls here, you push this down arrow, you get your controls. A lot of options here. We're just going to look at a, a few cool things. So first up, you have some really extensive trigger modes here. You've got a hysteresis knob. Uh, but what I really want to highlight is besides the color control if you come down to the wrench again on the oscilloscope one you have some presets these presets open some doors and i think will be really nice starting points if you just intend to open it up and use it uh notably the they give you the measurements in samples and like their grid is super well defined so if you're using this for like technical reasons fantastic tool now i want to highlight the impulse mode so if you're unfamiliar uh, what you do to see how a system responds is you feed it a transient spike, a delta, which is meaning it's it's a file that's got a bunch of zeros, then there's a one, and then there's a bunch of zeros after it. It's, it's just an instantaneous spike. And what you do is you feed it through a system, and then you record that system's output, and that's called the impulse response. It's how it responded to that impulse, and they have uh, of physical scopes. Um, we'll have usually a way to capture this spike because it can be really tricky to like nail down and do that. So what I, I'll do is I'll record it and then I'll zoom in where that recording was. But uh, here, you can get it right here. It will just give you the, the impulse. There it is. And it'll stop it and you can look right at it. So this is fan freaking tastic. Now, of course, I'm feeding it just like a sine wave. So it's kind of like whatever. But you can get some really weird looking results from certain plugins given the impulse it, it can be very insightful to look at so I, this isn't going to be a lesson on like checking that kind of stuff and it should be noted that in my testing for a lot of them i didn't do this for all of them it's one of the few things i do for all of them i ran the i did do an impulse test independent of the scope to see if the scope itself uh did any sort of weird stuff to an impulse and everything i tested spat out the sync function which is what we expect so I just was like, okay, this is this is good enough. I'm just going to sort of go with it. If you do come across one of these scopes that has it, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll, I'll update the table and make sure that that's noted because that is very significant if it messes with your audio. It absolutely shouldn't. So, okay. Anyways, this is Signal Analyzer. Very cool scope. Let's take a look at this, uh, the site real quick and go over here. And by the way, control F does work. So if, if you're having like, I'm like, oh, where is it? I'm going to just go control F and just use signalizer. There it is. And uh, we'll go to its page. And I made it so that these open in a separate page. And so this is the guy. You want the binary download. Totally free. Dude, you did fantastic work. Whoever you are. This is, this is spectacular. Great job. This is something I was sleeping on. Had no idea this was a thing. Okay, so let's go over. So that was the winner. Uh, up next, we've got a bunch of level twos and threes. These are these are loosely just like a loose, loose, my judgment ranking system. And again, just because it doesn't have a rank does not mean that I thought it was bad or that you shouldn't download it. It's just that I will probably reach for another tool before I reach for that one. Uh, unless I want to, you know, just get some variety in my life, I guess. Uh, but uh, we have it here. And I didn't want like to rank everything because that would just be way, it'd just be a ton. And yeah, like you'd have to come up with a really formal system. So again, it's very loose. We're gonna start with uh, Wave Candy. You can you can buy it separately as a plugin in the Juice Pack, which comes with a lot of other plugins. Kind of a bummer you can't get it separately. But yeah, this is Wave Candy. You'll see this in a lot of my older videos. It is native to FL and it scored the best on the CPU benchmarks because I tested it in FL. So of course it's gonna. There were a few other scopes that came close. 
Uh, so wave candy, you can go full screen, fully resizable. It even like switches the uh, the meter based on the dimensions of the scope. And if you want like a weird dimension thing, like here it wants to do a spectrogram, you could still choose a slow scope. So it's not like it's stuck if you do it that way. Uh, I used to stick this down in the corner and use it to sync my voice to my video, uh, which is kind of a weird way to do it. That's how I did it for a long time. You can fully change the colors. You can get rid of the wave candy. You can even make it something say something else, like composing gloves. Say that in the corner. I don't know why you'd want to do this. Maybe to like label the tracks or whatever. Uh, it could be kind of a nice way. So you could have like eight of these open and then have the track name. It'd be really cool if this updated with the track, if it grabbed the track name. Put that in a feature request for ImageLine. That's a good idea, ImageLine. Uh, something that, I, that is kind of interesting here is the update function. So the sync options on, on uh, Signalizer were very extensive. Uh, and this is how the, the scope will trigger and how it will re basically freeze the display. So if I play a note, you know, it's, it's moving all over the place here. I was playing an F. So I can go to update and choose for it to update at a at a pitch rate. And this is what Wave Candy uses. So I could hit F1. It sits a lot more still. If I play a lower note, it would be a little more stable. If it was using a trigger-based system that you could like manually adjust, which is, by the way, how a physical scope, at least in the, the analog scope that I use, uses this. Once you get that trigger down to right where it touches the wave, the wave just like stops. Unless, depending on the content, but if it's if it's periodic, it's just gonna freeze right where it's at. Makes it really easy to look at it. So this update thing, it is cool. I like it. It'd be nice to see some additional trigger options here. You've also got window, which is just like, I note this also, because some plugins exclusively use window to do the syncing, basically just saying just zoom out more is their kind of solution. But you could zoom out a little more if we zoom way in. You get less periods inside the the display very cool and you do get your stereo separation stereo that kind of a thing so you can see what the individual channels on your left to right are doing so that's wave candy that was up there on my list i use it a lot i think it's great um let's go back over to the desktop so this is the whole reason i made the desktop so i didn't have to keep doing the scrolling but on the desktop on the mobile version this top row stays where here if i scroll down <laughs> it goes away so that's one reason i'll use mobile is just so that these stay there Okay, up next we got Pretty Scope. Pretty Scope is a scope not necessarily aimed to be the most technical, it's aimed to be the prettiest. Hence the name. Oh, I've already got one loaded up here. Well, let's, let's get rid of it. Let me just show you its loading speed. Pretty Scope. Loads really fast, uses the Juice framework. Uh, there's another scope, if we look at a tool chain, also uses the Juice framework. This is the big brother to RS Met's signal analyzer, which I, uh, prefer a little bit more but you see these look very similar so i don't know if the same guy made it or if these are just implementations because they both use the juice framework to make this and no no, no. this is an interesting it's an interesting deal is interesting let me know uh, was it the same guy i didn't dig that far into it and they may just be built-in framework functions in which case they're just including them but the style is very similar i mean it's just just kind of weird so anyways, yeah, XY scope, that means that the scope itself, by the way, a signalizer has this as well. It's in my it's in my spreadsheet, but this one specializes in XY. So the whole idea is you can make shapes and pictures and make oscilloscope music, which is music that when you play it through an oscilloscope with an XY mode will form images. It is not the same thing as your regular vector scope. For example, Wave Candy does not support XY on my chart because it has the left right this is to show your stereo image very common meter i did check if a scope had if an oscilloscope because again we're only looking at oscilloscope but if they had a vector scope that could do xy like full xy then i then i included it if it was just the 45s i didn't include it because that's not full xy so but yeah, you get some cool images. You could show your stuff. I have some stereo stuff going on to specifically highlight this. So it's easy to see it on these scopes. Uh, but yeah, oscilloscope music is essentially XY sort of checks that box. So you can get this for $19. And uh, I grabbed this one. It's one of the, it's made to be very artistic looking. Other uh, presets are wild looking. And you can do the one dimensional 
we come down here, where, where is it? 1D mode, do your standard scope. And you can choose the number of cycles. Pull this up. Which, this is kind of a unique thing. Um, again, using the same framework, tool chain has a 1D mode. And you could choose a number of cycles. They also have a a free mode though. See how it's just kind of moving. Where I don't know, does this one have a free mode? I don't think it does. So I, I'll I'll have noted that in the spreadsheet. So very, very cool. And if we go over to the spreadsheet, we look, we have the sync, and if we go to pretty scope, it's just directional, meaning that it's got a scan direction, but they don't really give you that much control over it, other than you could choose like the cycles. It's kind of a unique thing. Others have like the more traditional stuff like trigger or some sort of a looping fashion. But anyways, it got a, a level three. Very, very cool for visualization. They've got some really wacky modes that give you some uh, some very pretty things. If we come down here, go through some presets. There we go. So you see, it's not got necessarily an emphasis on being super technical. It's got a big emphasis on just looking really cool. And uh, having also the oscilloscope music as I think what drove it into existence. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go down to Blue Cat. You'll see this one recommended a lot. It is a $50 scope. The It is the oscilloscope multi. A lot of cool options here. It is the first multi-channel scope that I have on the list that has been ranked. So what that means is you can have more than one instance of Blue Cat and they can all see each other and display all the information. So for example, here, I'm gonna hook this up to channels one and two and close this. They've got a bunch of really awesome sync modes, including trigger, and they do have a full-blown XY mode and you can do some really nice things. Also great for measurement. You, uh, the zooming's fantastic. You know, it's it's got all the boxes checked. You can name things and label them. You get a histogram on the side, like just some cool stuff. So, anyways, you can see that here's our here's our scope. Information's coming in. Uh, what I'll do is I'll add another scope here. We'll call it the the blue cap. I'll just type in multi. If I can spell. And we'll give this channels three and four. You don't necessarily have to link up channels, but look at this. We, if we play back the pattern, even though this is on a completely separate channel, we can see channels one and two. So this is what I mean by multi-channel. I guess I could call it multi-instance, but we can actually turn these off if we only want to see the channels that we're looking at. So if I play this, nothing happens. Uh, but this is the oscilloscope multi. It's got like all the boxes checked. Uh, it is, I believe, only discreetly resizable, if I recall. Oh, here it is. It's this box right here. You can go like large. So it is resizable. So I continuously resizable. So on the sheet, I mark it as discrete. So otherwise it means continuously resizable. So that's a blue cat multi oscilloscope. Definitely one worth looking at. Again, these all cost some money. Unless you already have FL Studio, then you've got like wave candy for free. So that's pretty sick. Uh, let's go ahead and go down here to the next one. Signal analyzer. It's only available in 32 bit. And you saw a CPU score come down here. CPU benchmarks was among the worst, especially when you had a lot of instances. This is because it's only available in 32 bit. And so if I come in here, but I really, really like the scope. It is so easy and straightforward to use. I often grab it. It's not resizable. It's just small. And sometimes it even bugs out and the display just goes away and you have to open, close it and open it again. So it's got its issues, but it's really just so straightforward. So Let's, uh, let's put it on a thing where there's an actual channel. And also, I did all my testing with the GUIs open because that forces, um, you know, some plugins do not perform well with the GUI open. And I want to know if that is the case because that can really matter. Uh, some isotope stuff. I'm not sure if this is still true because it's been a while since I've grabbed some of their stuff for what I do. But they're... Way like this was like a few years ago. I would always avoid opening, I think it was Insight because it would just murder my, it would just slow down everything. It drove me crazy. So I, I want to be aware of that. So just so you know, when I do the testing, so we're going to grab Signal Analyzer, put it up here. This is Signal Analyzer. Play it. See how beautiful that blue and green is? 
It's so easy to see the two channels for this. Beautiful. And also, they've got a free running mode. So, this is free, and then this one is low pass zeros, which is a sync mode. And you see how the wave pretty much sits right right where it's at. It's not really moving. Uh, they've, they've done a really great job at this. So, if you play intervals, it does a good job at keeping the wave where it's at. When you give it complex waves, it's pretty hard to do that. And at that point, you generally want a bigger window size and things. But this one, totally free. Again, only 32 of it, so that's kind of like, uh, and they, he did update, or she, I'm not sure if it's a guy or girl who made this, um, I just call it, I just call them them. Uh, we'll go tool chain, and we'll go over to, so they, they put all their plugs into one big thing, so they're still working on this, uh, but if you go over to, not scope, is it multi-analyzer? Multi-analyzer. Go over to wave. They do have it in here. However, they chose to make the two channels like gray and dark gray or something. So I don't consider this nearly as good. So I still prefer the old version to this newer updated version. Uh, but it is cool and to know that the, the software is still alive and still being developed. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some stuff improve on that front, uh, at least color wise. You also noticed that it was a little, the screen was a little bit less a smooth but i think i had a frame control on that so uh, let's check that real quick cool chain come in choose analyzers multi-analyzers wave yeah we, had an F we have an fps control right here so this is like a cpu option so it can be extremely smooth so i was like i remember being i remember being able to change that uh so okay that's our our level three and then we'll go over to level two now. We've got a, okay, so this is a very simple scope, but the scope looks so good. And I've looked at plugins by Soka Labs before. Uh, I believe it was their spectrogram that I checked out. This is the oscilloscope, and their oscilloscope is awesome. We're gonna go for, and it's also just called oscilloscope, which I think is <laughs> kind of funny. I was I was kind of scared that people were just gonna, multiple people were just gonna call it oscilloscope. So totally resizable. Uh, there's not a way to hide these things, so you can't go like beautiful full screen. That'd be a great option if you had like a full screen option. Uh, but just check out. Look at that. It looks so good. It just looks good. It's like mm. you got some trigger modes and some zoom, some really basic uh, features. But for the most part, this is going to do a lot of what you probably want a scope to do. It is totally visual. There's absolutely zero reference for any kind of measurements or anything like that. Like some of them you can click and get information as well. Not so with this one, totally visual, but I had to include this one because it's just so dang simple. And I believe it also did great. We go to the Soka Labs oscilloscope. Yeah, five, five. It, with 20 instances, the meter didn't even increase at all. Did fantastic on the benchmarking. So if you've got a computer that, that kind of struggles a bit and you want a nice looking scope, uh, that can do it. Okay, so the next ones are a reactor ensemble. That This thing is just so dang cool. I have to share it. It's three. You do need reactor to have this working. And I, I included even stuff like uh, Cycling 74's Max. And you might have Max for live. So you would have access to this. So if you have that, they have a little scope thing in there. I, I don't have it, so I was unable to do anything with it. Uh, but yeah, Socio, Sos Plastics. It's a reactor ensemble. You down, I've got links to everything right here. Um, and let's just go ahead, open up Reactor, and let me just show you this crazy thing. Uh, but anyways, we're going to boot up the Ensemble, which kind of demonstrates it. And where did the scope go? It's all the way down here. So this is the scope. Yeah, And it, it's really artistic, kind of. All the controls are right here. This this is just the manual. When you hover it over, it tells you what the thing It even highlights it. Like, look at that. It's so dang cool. You got multiple channels. But if you go into the scope, this is the scope itself. So this is just like an ensemble demonstrating what you can connect to it. But uh, there you go. There, that's the scope. And if we go out to the panel, this is from, I believe, I can't remember if this is built into the ensemble for that. Something I added is just as checking some stuff. Uh, but if we go ahead and start this engine up and play it. It's just such a school. It's just such a cool scope. You have X, Y. You've got a bunch of nifty things on there. You can look at the spreadsheet. Uh, but very, very cool. Totally free if you have Reactor. 
and something that I would definitely doodle with or just have open on the side. Just feed it some signals and and uh, get get working with it. Really, really cool. Wanted to mention it because it's one of the most creative looking things I've seen. I was like, oh my gosh. There was another one I really wanted to trap for Reactor that it cost $30. It was called um, Amazing Scope. I believe it was. Yeah, Amazing Scope by Amazing Machines. It's, it's $30 plus assuming you have Reactor. So if you don't have Reactor, it's you got to buy Reactor too. Um, and... I couldn't benchmark it, but it it looked dang cool. It looked super retro. Very, very nice. Finally, at the end here, I do put down physical options. So this is kind of like, you know, most of you probably going to go for the free one. Probably grab Signalizer. But it is worth noting that I have an eBay link here. If you look up Oscilloscope, if you type in Analog Scope 2, a lot of labs are selling off really nice scopes for physical scopes. For like, you know, look at some of this stuff. I bought I, the one I have next to me right here. I think I bought for 150. Um, you're doing audio stuff, so any scope will pretty much work for the most part, because like these scopes are built to handle stuff way above audio. Anything audio would give it. So you'll be totally fine with that. Audio is considered low frequency when you look at in the grand scheme of things. So some cool stuff here. Now you will want to check, see if it has the options. If you want like X, Y mode, that is something you want to check for. Uh, and also the number of channels provided. But uh, I, I highly recommend, you know, check out the analog scope area. There's a lot of great stuff out here that you can pick up um, and get some, some really cool experience with. Uh, some professors that I have for electrical engineering. So found out that I was, because I did some of my experiments online, so I just used the analog scope for troubleshooting some of the circuit. And when they saw that it wasn't a digital scope, that it was like analog, most of my professors are old, and like that was like what they used. They're like, oh, right, this is like, yeah, good job. It's so nice. It was, it was pretty dang funny. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool. If you want to do oscilloscope music, you know, you got to get an analog scope. If you're really serious about it, get one with an XY mode. It's so cool to see it like, if right there in front of you like you can see the the screen lighting up just right like, oh man it's ain't cool so anyways yeah look at some, look at some analog ones you know get some good experience uh, step out of the box a bit it's it's quite the ex it's quite the experience so that's my listing of the scopes uh let me go ahead and um review what some of these things mean just to avoid confusion x y again only looking for if it can do full on XY, basically oscilloscope music. If it only does the 45s to show stereo imaging, I did not count it because that's that's not what I was looking for in full XY. Uh, Multi-channel is the ability to have multiple instances and see them like we saw with Blue Cat Multi. It's not multi-channel like 7.1 or 5.1 surround sound. It is true, uh, I guess I could call it multi-instance. Maybe I'll change it. Uh, we've got color control. Color control just means you're able to, you have dominion over the different elements of the plugin and changing the color. This can be especially useful if you ever plan to print out a display, which you probably will never do that. But for labs, I use scopes a lot. And when the background was black and I wanted to print out a result to a sheet, it was really annoying when I couldn't change the background color because that's a lot of ink. So color control is always very nice. Uh, sync. Again, sort of how the waveform freezes. Freeze, there must be a button on the plugin that is dedicated to stopping the display so you can look at it. Uh, some of these plugins don't have it, some do. It's always a nice feature when they do have it, especially when you're teaching or explaining or trying to learn how something works. Uh, resizable, is, we've already kind of looked at that, pretty self-explanatory. Clean full screen. Some of these plugins get close, but they uh, when, you, when you resize them, some are forced to stay in rectangular form. So as a result, um, when you move them, they can they get close to full screen. So I'm like, it's close, but it's not quite there. But I'll mark it um, if they have very little controls. Ideally, it's just the display. There's no additional controls. That's true, clean, full screen. But some of them get really, really close, and there's just a little bit of displays, almost nothing. So I, I give those ones a bit of credit too. And others that are set to a rigid shape, but they mostly conform to the ideals of a, full, a clean full screen. I also give them a little bit of credit. You'd be surprised, like for example, Pretty Scope, you know, the one made to look cool. 
I could not find a full screen option on it. It'd be really cool to see that added because the controls are quite ugly to have on the side of the display once you're all done. I'm not saying I don't like the look of the controls. I'm saying it ruins the aesthetic of, you know, you just want the scope. That's it. And it's digital. So why not? Why not go that far? So that's my opinion on it anyways. The aesthetic, you know, it's a cool aesthetic. I just, I just wish the controls could be hidden. Uh, okay, so that's clear full screen. Measurements. Measurements, that's kind of loose on. Basically, if there was a way to determine, you know, timing, like if they had like a time meter on the bottom or some sort of a DB meter on the side, it's like, oh, you can do some measurements. Some are way more extensive in this. Like uh, Studio One, PreSonus, Studio One's uh, scope, which is just called scope. Uh, it has some really extensive measurement options. Uh, the signalizer does and the blue cap multi does. So like when you click the cursor, it will give you all this information. You can measure from point to point with the cursor to be very exact. So some of them really do a good job here. So I was kind of loose on this. Uh, I was not very hard. If it was just a scope though, with like no other information, uh, like no reference, or it was just percentages, I didn't count that. Like, you know, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do with that? Uh, so at that point, you're just looking at the waveform, which is the whole point of it. But it's nice to be able to, if you want to get really specific or you're testing something very specifically or technical, nice to have a scope that can handle that uh zoom this specifically is referring to time zooming so not horizontal zooming because you can always just gain it up and then just look at it through the scope after gain stage you cannot zoom in time wise though it's not possible so the scope if it can't zoom in time wise then it's almost like you know that's not cool so i mentioned that limited means that it, it provides it in a way that's like set steps where they have things like some of them only use like beats like I believe this was one of them, the Oscillos Megascope. Uh, this one, you could set it to show like a quarter note or a 16th note, but that was like it. Or like, for example, we saw with the Pretty Scope, the zoom, maybe I should put limited next to this, but it only it had like a cycle view. It wasn't like a true window zoom kind of a, a thing. So uh, just keep that in mind. So th that's what zoom, when I refer to it, that's what I'm talking about. Not the, not the Y direction. Uh, the extra cool options, basically the scope features some extra options that are really cool and unique and some that, you know, wouldn't really make sense to have as a category. And I just want to mention those here. So a signalizer had a whole bunch of really cool modes. Um, quite a few of them had some extra cool stuff in them that, that, you know, you get the scope, there'll be some extra surprises there. That might be one reason you pick up that scope. And then finally, the levels, again, just my very, very loose judging criteria. Because there's a lot of scopes. How are you going to pick which ones you go after? Uh, you'll see the M scope pop up on a lot of things. I honestly don't necessarily really recommend this scope compared to other options out there. I, the, It does. It has a nice looking line and a fill and great color control. But very, very uh, basic, extremely basic scope. I, I And if we're going for looks, I kind of prefer the Soko Labs. But you might substitute this one for the for this one. But again, their sync options on this one are weird too. I don't know. It's totally free. So you just try it out. And the M multi analyzer is basically just this scope and with their they have some other cool analyzers hooked up. And so they just sort of included it there as well. So it's just kind of like a nice extra. It's not really made there. They didn't do anything with their scope that really sets it apart from the free version. And the the resizability for the free version. Um, I'm not sure if it's still like this, but you have to buy the free bundle and that opens up like some nice to have features, not essential to have. So I believe you can't resize if you're using the totally free version. So maybe I should put free sword. Well, it's totally free. They give you a watermark and stuff. I don't know. I'm a little conflicted about that. So anyways, that's what all, that's what all these things are. So yeah, I, I've included tons and tons of scopes in here, even like really kind of weird options that I'm not really sure. These are the plugin options. So after this, I, I kind of put a break and then these are sort of like Renoise has a bunch of uh, scopes like built into the workflow of the, uh, the tracker. It's like a DAW. It is a DAW. If you've never heard of trackers, you check them out. Cool way to write music. And that's that. Down here, uh, we've got the CPU results. And we've also got notes on anything that I ran into sort of weird issues with. So uh, some notes to know. The SM Exoscope, it mutes where it's at. And there's got to be a way to, to, to turn this off, but I could not find it. I don't know if there's a button or a hidden thing. Yeah, but it's just kind of a really weird deal. So yeah, it totally stops it. 
channel left, right. Um, you're able to view it like that, but this just totally freezes it. Also, this dial here, I don't know what the heck this does. Uh, so like, I thought it was a zoom, but if I play something, first, there's no audio, and then I don't know what this does. I, I, dig, I dug in the manual a little bit, but not too much because it's like, you know, there are other options that are a little more straightforward, but a lot of people really like this one, so I feel like I might just not know. So feel free, if you find any information on here that you're like, oh, there actually is a way to do that, feel free to let me know. Um, so yeah, just just so you know, yeah, I even noted here. I didn't look that far into it because it just didn't wasn't worth the time, in my opinion. If if it's not, I just don't understand why there wouldn't be an easy button that would be obvious and easy to understand and do it. If it's like some convoluted way or it just doesn't exist, it's kind of like what? So that's kind of an oversight there. Uh, the oscilloscope mega the oscillos mega scope, uh, big FPS drops. And also, yeah, they made me sign in every time I wanted to use it. So you might not be able to use it offline. Like, so that's another huge thing. I was like, what is this? Ocular scope, again, uh, it freaked out after like seven instances open at the same time. So maybe if they're closed, they'd work better. But still, that's like, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, track meter. Okay, so track meter, I had a weird experience with. When I had like 40 open, it was doing fine. But... Every now and then, it would just freak out and hold waveforms there that were no longer playing or uh, bring it, just, it would make its own waveforms. And sometimes it wouldn't even match what was going through it. So occasionally it got really weird and bugged out on me. And other times it worked surprisingly well for how many I had open. So kind of a weird experience with track meter. So just reporting that there, maybe you have a similar one. The disco, the scope by disco scope, which is it's this thing. It's called scope. It's a nice little scope. Uh, if we play it though, it'll only give you the left signal. Oh, again. Oh yeah. See, this is because I have that other one that does the weird muting thing. Weird. You see, only the left. I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> this, I mean, if is it monitoring that? Why would I want this in my signal chain? So, because it's gonna do that. So you you would want to set this up in parallel if you're gonna if you plan on using this thing. And uh, so apparently it only uses one channel too. So uh, be aware of that. And then the size scope, which is kind of a cool name for a scope. Uh, again, again with the juice thing. So completely resizable. This is one that was almost clean full screen. Like it's just the shape's kind of weird and they have the stuff along the bottom, but it's pretty minimal. Uh, it doesn't, you see how it only captures like the first little cycle. It's because it needs to be playing back. And then it updates it across. So that's something that I felt like was worth noting. And there was one other multi-channel scope that I thought was really cool. It didn't make my list, but I at least want to share it and highlight it a little bit. Uh, which one was it? There weren't that many multi-channel. No. Was the still is the mega scope? Mega. Oh yeah, see. Look look at that. And then yeah, they want me to purchase that. I'm running demos for all, for a lot of these because I just don't want to have to go and buy them. But again, it also has the relatively limited sync option. So if you want to zoom in, you're kind of 30 second notes the best you get. But you have it listed here. And I think what they did here, they did nail one part of this. So let's say I want my kick drum. I could add another uh, megascope. It instantly like recognized there were two. Does this, this didn't update. Oh no, it did update. And see, so it's only on the top. If I add a kick drum to this. You know, it's supposed to kicks in. And then if I start playing this, this will go out the master. It's only on the top. The reason the kick's showing on both is because I loaded the first one on the master. So it's seen the kick in the uh, thing. And this this gladly went up to 40 instances or something. It did begin to struggle, and the load times got quite long. Uh, and that's because I think I had them all open at the same time. But I was like, wow, it's, they're all on there. Like, okay, that's pretty dang crazy. I didn't go through and count, so maybe something weird happened in the middle of it. I just wanted to see what the load would be like. But uh, yeah, it was gladly adding more and more stuff, so that was uh, pretty fascinating. So anyways, there is a way more in-depth view than you probably asked for on the, uh, an oscilloscope comparison. And there you go. Those are my recommendations. Those are my reasons why. If you have different opinions and want to, you know, you think something else is a better one, or you got something that you're like, how could you have forgotten this? Uh, hit, hit me up. I'll try and get it on there and include it. 
uh, very cool. I'll probably do some separate videos on some of these scopes because they, they are really worth uh, looking into. Specifically, Signalizer really just is a monster. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.